In this talk, I'll give a, a brief introduction to Bayesian statistics with a focus on how it differs from the frequentist approach. In the frequentist approach, we consider the parameter as a fixed value and the data are a sample that is generated as a result of that fixed value. So we talk about the probability that we see a sample given the parameter value. We don't talk about the probability of the parameter value itself. You can also think of this as the hypothesis is true or not true. We never give the probability of a hypothesis. And the common tools that we use in the frequentist approach are null hypothesis significance testing, p-values, and confidence intervals. And I'll argue through an example in the upcoming slides uh, that these tools have tricky, sometimes counterintuitive interpretations because they are about the data and not about the hypothesis itself. Uh, for example, the p-value is interpreted as a probability of a false positive given the data. So in a coin flipping example, we may ask, is the coin fair, uh, expressed as uh, the probability of theta equals 0.5. And then we generate some data. We flip the coin 24 times, and it comes up head seven, seven times. And we can model this using the binomial distribution. Uh, so here we plug in these three numbers, 0 0.5, 7, and 24, and we get back 0 0.02, uh, which is shown as the red line in the histogram on the right. Uh, so we can see that if the coin were fair, it's fairly unlikely um, that we'd get this result, seven heads on 24 flips. Continuing with the frequentist analysis, uh, we can state our null hypothesis is that the coin is fair, probability of theta is 0.5, and our altern alternative hypothesis is that the coin is not fair. The probability of theta is not 0.5. Uh, we can then calculate a p-value, uh, which is interpreted as the probability that we see data at least as supportive of our alternative hypothesis if our null hypothesis were true. In this case, that's 6.4%. We can also calculate a 95% confidence interval which in this case comes out to 0.13 to 0.51. And the interpretations of the confidence interval are 95% of such intervals would contain the true value of theta. Uh, so that's imagining uh, repeated experiments where we're calculating a confidence interval for each one. An alternative interpretation is that the confidence interval is the range of theta for which we would not reject the null hypothesis at p uh, is less than 0.5%. Uh, so the point being, both of these um, common tools used in frequentist statistics, the p-value and the 95% confidence interval, have somewhat tricky interpretations that are difficult to get across if presenting results to um, someone who may not be uh, familiar and also they don't tell us what we arguably really want to know, which is that the probability that the coin is fair. So in the Bayesian approach, um, we start by choosing a prior distribution and we update the prior with the data to get a posterior distribution. And we do this through uh, Bayes rule, which is shown in this uh, formula here. Um, leaving aside the the details of this um, is because this brief introduction will, is focusing on um, how the interpretation is different. But um, leaving aside the details, we can uh, say that the prior is uh, this beta distribution here, beta 11, 11. Uh, and then we get a posterior distribution, uh, which is also a beta distribution with the parameters 18 and 28. We can see on the plot on the right, the posterior distribution can be thought of as um, a weighted average of the prior in the data. So the aspect of the Bayesian approach that I want to highlight is that the posterior is a distribution. And because it is a distribution, we can make direct probability statements about the fairness of the coin. So in the frequentist approach, 
um, we calculated the 95% confidence interval. And recall the interpretation of a confidence interval is 95% of such intervals, imagining repeated experiments, would contain the true value of theta, which is a somewhat counterintuitive statement and arguably not what we really want to know. Uh, so in the Bayesian approach, the uh, analogous concept is the highest density interval, which I've shown on the plot here by the red lines. And this tells us more directly where 95% of the probability density for theta lies. And if we want to get a uh, single point estimate or, or best guess for uh, the probability a coin will come up heads, we can take the mode of the posterior distribution represented by the green line, uh, which in this case, it comes out to about uh, 0.45. So that was a very brief introduction uh, to this topic, uh, focusing on uh, how Bayesian statistics can lead us to uh, more intuitive interpretations. Uh, to learn more, here are a couple uh, books in, in the coin flipping example uh, in these slides was taken from uh, the first book, Doing Bayesian Data Analysis.